Hello, and welcome to ZimDocs. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this ZimDocs, we're going to take a look at an SVG container. Let's go to the site now at zimjs.com. And maybe before we press on Docs to see where that is, let's see what the SVG container can do. Under the 10 at the bottom here, 10, or indeed, if you press the 10 logo here on the front page, you'll get to some things about Zim 10, including SVG container, which was launched. And that was quite important. And this is what we had before. We had an SVG to bitmap over here on the left. And then on the right, this is SVG right into blobs and squiggles and Zim shapes, which means we can adjust this. Isn't that cool? So this is SVG that allows the end user to adjust the SVG if, if you want them to. I also note that this example is not using Zim 10.3.0 with Retina. So uh, anytime you see these little, a little bit blurrier than any, anyway, uh, we digress. Uh, let's head on back to, to uh, Zim. And uh, there's another one, example two, right here, SVG to path. Uh, this one's a little bit gnarly looking, I suppose. This was our, our test page that would test to see if all of these different types of SV, SVG shapes and, and stuff like that, here they are, would uh, show up. And indeed, we, we got them too. So let's pop into the docs, and then we'll take a look at some code. To the docs here. Docs. SVG. SVG. Enter. Here's the SVG container, or indeed it's just down a little ways uh, in the display. It's the last one in the display there. SVG container. It is a container uh, that holds SVG, and we didn't quite know where to put it. <laughs> so that's that's where it went. All right, so it parses SVG and adds items to a Zim container. And there can also be circles, rectangles, blobs, squiggles. And if you turn geometric on, then circle and rectangles are used. Otherwise, a blob is used in the place of a, a circle or rectangle. Here are the two examples that we just looked at, links to those. And just note as well, as of 10.3, you can pass an SVG path directly into a squiggle or a blob. So you don't need to make a whole container if you have just a, you know, if you have an, some of those sort of like um, code looking things for SVG. Well, sh oh, well, here I can show you down here. Here's SVG and there is a path. So anytime you see a path in your SVG, there's SVG, a path. Then this stuff right here, that's the code. You can pass that directly into a, a blob or a squiggle and, and make that without using the container. But often SVG has lots of stuff in it. Like there's more than just one thing. And therefore the SVG container is the fastest way to parse all that and create Zim objects with it. And once again, there is also somewhere there's a mention here, the SVG um, to bitmap um, uh, down below in, in the docs as well, or in Zim. Okay, let's see. Why don't we go in and take a look at some code then. Whoop, close that down. Here's some code, and this code is SVG. So this was our test code. We went through that. Uh, I'm, I'm not really going to go through it too much, but there's all different types of things going on in here. Um, there's quadratic uh, Bezier curves and cubic Bezier curves and triangles and lines and shapes and that kind of stuff. And this one right here is was just like a mess. Look at all that. Blah, uh, and that was so hard to, to make work. And that is for the woman. And so we knew this is like a process thing, probably from some drawing editor or something like that. And we knew if, if we could process that in terms of it, turn it into blobs and squiggles, then, you know, that was the key to it. And KV helped out a lot. Uh, come on into Slack and give him thanks on that. Um, we sort of uh, gave him, the, he, was, he was really into SVG or still is into SVG. And uh, we gave him the task of, uh, fixing up the parsing. We did a lot of the parsing, but <laughs> it's just a couple things weren't working in there. All right, so now we're into some code. This is the SVG container example. 
and we'll scroll on down. There we are making a new SVG container, and we're passing in, you can't just pass in a URL, or well, the, the path here to the SVG. You need to bring that in as SVG. So that's just how we do all the rest of our assets as well. So here we are loading convert.svg. It must be in the same directory because there's no path. If we did have a path, it would be here. Blah, blah, blah. That would be the path. That's a string. This is one way to do it, to bring in SVG that already exists. And when you do that, then you use frame.asset SVG, and in that comes. But you can also just create an SVG string right here and pass the SVG string in uh, directly in your code. You don't have to load it in from a remote file or a remote place. You can also uh, have an SVG tag down below in your HTML and you can pass in an, uh, a zid, zid, which is a, uh, represents that tag. It's like document.getElement by ID. You can pass that right in here as well. So there's a few different ways that you can bring in your SVG. Once we've got that, we add that to the stage. <laughs> cool, huh? And that turns, uh, let's view that, open in browser. There she be. So that's all of these things. This one, it looks like it was a rectangle. You can tell it's a rectangle with a transform. That's what we've done is we put a transform in there. That's a rectangle with the transform. Whereas uh, these other things right here are, uh, that's a squiggle. So we're moving that squiggle around like that. And here's another squiggle underneath. These were our test uh, squiggles and so forth. Uh, this one is a blob, so uh, triangles, we don't map to the Zim triangle. It's a little bit complicated. It's a blob, so that means we can add uh, extra curves to it if we want, for instance, and so forth. Uh, down below is just a, an output to show you what SVG we're operating on. And there. Isn't that cool? So that's an SVG container, turns SVG into editable curves. If you want, you can make that not editable as well. Um, it's easy enough to make it not editable. There's a few parameters in there to look at. Uh, one parameter, is, which is the next one, is to use shapes or no, what was it? To, oh, to it'll try and keep on making one big blob out of separate shapes. So there might be paths, multiple paths in here. These could be set, treated as separate or they could be treated as one big thing. So when we did the lady, here let's bring in the lady. This is the lady and we'll comment out our test. Test being commented out. Here's the SVG container and we'll run this again. Open in browser. I think I already had it open. Where's my browser? <laughs> Go away. A refresh there. So there's the lady, but you can see that she's not quite filled up. And that was because of the setting. Let's hit the Zim docs again on the SVG. Enter. Split types right here. So under split types, split types default false. Set to true to split the different types of paths into separate objects. Turns out if we set that to true, then it fills in. So there was something in there that didn't like, um, uh, oh, I think I probably know where it is. It, it probably just wrapped or twisted the color. Sometimes a big blob will uh, sort of fold over the color. It's, it has to do with this thing called winding, and uh, it, it may not fill in if it's overlapping in a certain way. Uh, that, that could be something to it. Anyway, if we, if we go comma true here, I think we're... We're good, that's the second one, and we refresh here. Refresh. Or maybe it was the opposite way. That, that would sort of make sense, um, except I think then that means we got our defaults wrong. Uh, false, so that should have defaulted to true, and hence I thought maybe it was the opposite way. Let me try that. There we go. Okay, so that makes sense. If we looked at the Zim docs, uh, set to true to split different types of paths into separate objects. So the default is false. And we had to put a true in there. No, and as we're back to sort of the way that I was thinking in initially, we, oh yeah, no, this is uh, what's happened. We've got the wrong default um, listed there. 
So we'll update that in the docs. Hey, that's one good thing about doing these uh, these doc presentations is <laughs> on occasion we find a little typo. Yeah, these things happen. You can be where there with us during the discovery phase. Oh, it's amazing. So false, we're not splitting that up into different in, uh, into different things, and therefore the whole lady is showing. Now, how do you make it so that it's not so that it doesn't come up with all of this stuff? Um, and that it just shows like that. Mind you, it's sort of nice. Uh, to some degree, it's nice sometimes to, to refresh this and, and have all these things showing. It shows you can edit it. Uh, on this complex example, it's a little bit much, isn't it? So um, we may want to edit the separate parts. Let's see. Does it say? There is style, so we can deal with that. Split types, SVG, geometric. Yeah, it looks like we'll have to access the specific SVG that's inside that inside the container but we can do that with style so let's uh, let's do that then come back and let's see if we can find our code somewhere here it is so style capital uh, is equal to if this is all we've got we can jump right to the style and we can we can set it inter interactive colon false like that so that would turn everything that can be interactive false. Uh, I think the only thing that has interactive styles, so we can't even interact with this thing now. So that would be one way of doing it. Or we could say show controls colon false, and that might be the better way, certainly, if you want to interact with it later. So now it doesn't show controls, but when we toggle it, it comes on. And you can stop that toggle as well. You can say show controls and don't uh, toggle colon false will make it so that, or toggle controls, I can't remember which one, will make it so that you can uh, not toggle it. <laughs> All right, so uh, note that each of these things is an object in a container. And um, so if you were going to try and operate on certain ones and like turn off certain ones and not other ones, then you can use the get child at zero, get child at one, get child at two. You just have to sort of figure out which ones they are. All right, I think that's uh, probably good enough. Uh, one thing, uh, did we get? Yeah, I did tell you that you can put the, S the SVG path directly into blobs and squiggles. So that might be the route you wanna go, depending on what system you have. And if you're not going to interact with it, if you're not doing any interaction and don't need these Bezier curves, et cetera, then you're welcome to just use the SVG to bitmap. And that, that just turns it into a bitmap, it may be, uh, a little bit less memory in the end to just turn that into a picture. All right, this has been Inventor Dan Zen, uh, otherwise known as Dr. Abstract for ZimDocs. Have a great day or a night. Ciao. Come join us as well. If you want to talk about any of this, come join us at zimjs.com slash slack. Ciao.